Starting off today's openings with Dastardly Villain Brewing's Diabolically Decadent Brown Ale. Yes, Dastardly Villain, the makers of beer-flavored beer. Regulars to this channel may remember this one. It's the one that they describe as going well with cookies. And how can you not like that? But the beer is not the only thing I'm opening today. I also have a bunch of mail. This came from a seller in Ottawa, Canada. Nice. Uh, it's nice and skinny. What did I order from a Canadian seller that's skinny? Ah, okay. That's the uh, that's the guy. Thanks for the order. Cool. It is an oh, it's an adapter. It is an XD adapter. That is for a really old, really obsolete uh, camera card format. Wow. All wrapped up in there. There it is in all its yellow glory. So it appears to take an SD card. Let's just quickly harvest one from my MP3 player that's conveniently located. Uh, I'm assuming that goes in that way. That makes sense. And then I need to get the ancient obsolete uh, camera that I accidentally bought at a yard sale. So I will get this. Now this is, I mean, what triggered me to buy it, A, it was really cheap, but B, it's got 10 times optical zoom, and I do like a good optical zoom. Unfortunately, I didn't pay a lot of attention, and the one feature that I should have researched a little bit more, like for two seconds more, is that. Um, for still photos, that's not huge, and its video performance is even worse. But I've got it, so I might as well try and use it. This appears to go in that way, I think. Maybe. Maybe this way. I don't know. It was used. I don't think it came with a manual. Hmm. Did I, once again, waste some money here? I hope it wasn't very much. I'm going to struggle with this for a few minutes off camera. And if I can get it to go in there, well, we'll try and take a picture or two. While I'm struggling with that, you can check out the listing. This is a micro SD TF2 Olympus XD picture card memory adapter, 16 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte, 4, 2, and 1 gigabyte. Right. I bought this for a whole $5 Canadian with free shipping from Dabom18 in Ontario. And that is exactly what it looks like. It says it'll support a micro SD card, and yeah, I can plug that in. Compatible with MASD-1 cameras. Don't know what MASD is. For a bit of searching, I still can't find what MASD is, but I'm suspecting that it's an Olympus-specific sub-variant of the XD card. So my camera is a Fuji S5100. This one is talking about a 5200 and says it doesn't fit. Now the width of the card is just off enough. And it, okay. So once again, I screwed up. I wasted five bucks. Hopefully this is instructive to you. Should you be looking for this obsolete system and you don't waste your money. Well, let's try again. This says it is soldering iron tip times two. Let's hope that's what it is, because that sounds like a useful thing. Yes, in fact, it is. It is two soldering tips for T12 soldering iron, which is, in fact, what I use. Um, are they the same? No, they're not. There's the part numbers and model numbers for those playing along at home. I... Those numbers don't mean a hell of a lot to me, so let's just open them up and see what they really are. Now then, some people who are particular fans of a very specific soldering iron tip are going to be annoyed at me for this. This one, uh, yeah, this one over here is a sort of a thin, tiny little chisel tip kind of a, a tip, and this one is one of the type that I prefer it has a single bevel on it. And this one is sort of in between the two sizes of the tips that I've already got. Actually, no, it isn't. I lied. It is, I'm pretty sure, exactly the same as the one that I use the most. 
and this one is a much smaller version this one is so let's just pull these out and take a look at them so yeah this is the one that i use all the time the bcf2 and the new one is a replacement for it and the smaller one is a bc1 okay and the small one is a d12 the small little chisel tip one for anyone who's interested in the specifics t12 kit soldering iron tip for Heiko all these different ones soldering handle durable uh, so this seller has a whole bunch of different ones from that list i got the d12 which was three pounds 76 or five dollars and 83 cents canadian with free shipping and i also got the bcf2 which was again three pounds 76 or 583 canadian and this is that one that i like the most the the angled tip a lot of people seem to like these chisel tip ones and they have them in various different sizes all the way from 3.2 millimeters across the front to 0.8 millimeters well so far i'm 50 50 for usefulness let's see what we got here it says esp32 expansion board okay did i order an esp32 or something to go with it two things woohoo starting with the smaller one one with the pins it looks like it is it's just a straight up esp32 not the cam module not the one with the vga on it just a plain jane esp32 dev board which is good because i don't actually have one so that's nice to actually have one of these that you can just mess with right um, it's got the boot button and it's got what is that en enable button oh i was expecting a reset with the boot button is nice you can put it straight into the boot loader without having to jumper pins and stuff that is handy esp32 development board esp32 dev kit c32 esp room 32 expansion board yeah whatever uh size one size only so this one has a ch340 on it for usb programming there it is right there that's nice six dollars and 24 cents with free shipping that's reasonable enough i guess what else do they have okay i wonder if that's what i got in the kit as well with from the same seller it takes a voltage input from 5 to 12 volts so yeah sure there's a voltage regulator right there that makes sense but these are natively a 3.3 volt device so just be a little bit careful with your voltages if you're not using 3.3 for everything and the other thing in the same package from the same seller looks like it is a screw terminal breakout board for esp32 oh and it's got two different widths of pin spacing so it'll work with this one or if you get a different type that sits wider has a has a wider stance as you huh pin spacings just don't work out check that out doesn't go that way doesn't go that way what the hell and admittedly these pins are a little bit wonked out but does that line up with the pin spacings that way no no it doesn't so this is the breakout board that i actually got esp32 breakout board gpio esp32 blah 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 right same seller of course four dollars and 92 cents and it looks like it should work see that looks a lot like it right there looks like exactly the same board on it hmm so i wonder if just the pins and the sockets are soldered on wonky i don't know anyway um regardless this is the one that i got wide compatibility mm. only suitable for 38 pin narrow version not applicable to dev kit v1 version let's just go back to that one it does not in fact describe itself as a dev kit v1 does it okay so i'm going to have to tinker and experiment a little bit i may or may not be able to use this with this one but i might be able to use it with something else i hope i'm kind of 50 50 for tonight so let's see what the next thing in here is no customs lies on it okay oh i didn't do that that happened in shipping 
Uh oh. So hopefully there's nothing missing from this. It's a mini speaker. Mini Bluetooth speaker, maybe? I don't remember ordering that. Um, USB, little foamy thing there. DC 5 volts, micro TF, micro SD. Okay. So we have a couple of USB connections on it. Power on off. Oh, it's got some little light in. Okay. Okay, so it is Bluetooth, because it just said so. Uh, we have some, your standard, you know, play, skip, fast forward. Oh, it's even got this little telephone play pause button. So you can use this as a speakerphone in addition to just normal Bluetooth. And then, you know, fast forward or skip forward, skip backwards. M is mode. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, why did I order a cheap Bluetooth speaker? I don't even like Bluetooth speakers. It looks like it can also be used as a power bank. That's random, but okay. Let's try it with an SD card that I stole out of my MP3 player. Need fingernails? Okay, fine. I'll push that in that way. I hope I can get it back out. What happens now? SD card mode. Oh, look, it's YouTube-friendly music. Right. At least it works. It doesn't sound great, but at least it works. wonder if I was drinking some night and just randomly clicked on stuff. I don't know. So, after comparing tracking numbers that are hidden in the label underneath the label on the bag, I'm pretty sure it is this. Surprise box 2022 brand new electronic items. Why did I buy that? I don't know why I bought that. Why did I pay $17.86 Canadian for it? I have no clue. I'm going to blame beer and ashens for, uh, for influencing me to try and buy a surprise box of electronic items. Anyway, they describe it as goods in the box or electronic products, digital products, yada, yada, yada. Could be Bluetooth headsets, data cables, Bluetooth speakers, solid state U discs, electric toothbrushes, cameras, watches, etc. This was an auction. It is, I don't think, an experiment that I'm going to be trying again. But I've got a cheap Bluetooth speaker that I can hack into, tear down, modify, crush under my car. I don't know. Comments down below. Give me some ideas. And the last thing in. What do you think? Is it going to be another dud or is it going to be cool? The uh, lies on the package say measurement. Uh, total value nine ninety five uh, nine euros ninety five. Maybe. Ooh, it's a dial indicator. So this, for those who don't know, is a measurement device, a precision measurement device that machinists tend to use. They, they are sort of the target market for it. I am nowhere near that precise or accurate, as I'm sure you know. But it, uh, let's see now, how do I adjust it here? You see, you set it like that, you just zero it out. And then as you push this up against something, it counts in this case in millimeters. So the smaller indicator in there counts in millimeters. Yeah, so somewhere in there is like zero millimeters. So every revolution is one millimeter of movement of this guy. And it measures up to one centimeter if you go around that far. It's very, very precise, very fine movements. And the reason I bought this is for the implausible reason of checking the flatness of my 3D printer bed, of the aluminum substrate underneath the bed and of the glass bed itself. The glass is going to be fairly flat. Uh, that magnetic build plate that I got a while ago, probably not so flat. But just to see how far it is out across the build surface. Yeah, that's pretty edge case. And yes, I could use 
an automatic bed leveling probe and do a mesh bed level, but I don't want to. So I got this and I'm going to uh, print out an adapter piece to put it on the side of the hot end. And I'm going to just make sure that my bed is nice and flat. And if it's not, maybe I'll get a replacement glass bed or something else. I'm not sure. 0.01 millimeter accuracy measurement instrument gauge precision tool dial indicator. Got this for $15.08 Canadian with $0.59 cents shipping. Not sure why it was listed in euros on the package. Whatever. So, uh, as it said on the unit, uh, 0 to 10 millimeter range, 0 0.01 millimeter accuracy. Not much to say about it that hasn't already been said. There's the dimensions of it, and it looks exactly like that. So there we go. A mixed bag if there ever was one. A little disappointed in some of these items, but some of them are going to be really useful. Soldering iron tips are always good to have in a variety of sizes. Don't uh, get yourself locked into one because sometimes it's just really handy to have bigger or smaller than your normal size for certain jobs. That's disappointing and that's on me because I didn't do my research properly. So five bucks wasted there. Oops. But as I said, hopefully somebody learns from my mistake if they're searching for memory card adapters for a vintage digital camera. Uh, this ESP32 board is going to be handy for experimenting and tinkering, and it's one that I didn't have. This adapter, on the other hand, doesn't quite fit, and I'm not sure if I will make it fit, refold the pins and whatnot, or if I will just use it for something else, or strip it for screw terminals, although probably not. This random piece of randomness. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was drinking one night watching Ashen's opening uh, tat, weird tat from uh, from Wish.com and various other places and figured I'll try my hand at these random boxes. And I lost the game. Oh well, you live and learn. And then this. As I said, way more precise than I have any right to be, but I think it will be useful for... Like I said, super duper dialing in my 3D printer without the need for going through automation. I always like to do things the harder way, the manual way, if I can, at least initially, so that I understand the process a lot more deeply. And that's kind of what that's about. That's what a lot of my tinkering with the 3D printer is about, to, to understand and learn more deeply rather than just pushing go, crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. Anyway, there you go. Tonight's Mailbag Monday. Um, so in the comments, uh, let me know what you want me to do with this thing. What do you think I should do? Tear down, uh, hack into something else. Just give it to one of the kids for and treat it as disposable. Put it in some kid's Halloween bag coming up. I don't know. Uh, let me know. And anything else, actually, uh, let's hear about it down in the comments. I'm sure you got questions about some of this stuff. I'm sure somebody's going to call me an idiot for preferring the wrong kind of soldering tip. Anyway, um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me uh, buy this stuff and helping keep my beer fridge full. Very useful. Very important. Also, thanks to my YouTube channel members for kicking a few dollars in every month. I appreciate that too, guys. Um... Yeah, questions or comments? I already said that part. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.